This is Rob Turbot for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. Delighted to be joined by Shane McGuigan. Something new today. We're in lovely sunny Slough because Shane, you've got two new signings to announce here today. So first and foremost, why don't you tell us what we're here to announce? Here to announce uh, the signing of Adam and Hassan Azim. Um, Adam's just turned 19 and Hassan's 20. Uh, super talented boys. I think Adam's going to be about a welterweight, maybe a light middleweight, and uh, sorry, Hassan's going to be a welterweight middle, and Adam is a lightweight. So exciting times, mate. Yeah, we, I mean, bundles of talent and a uh, huge fan base as well because there's about 150 people here today to just witness the signing. So um, it's quite, it's quite nice. It's something different because it's 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 the fact that people are willing to to turn up and show their support to. To the boys, but more importantly, like they've put, I think Hassan had about 87 amateur fights, and uh, Adam had about late 70s. So the fact that they spent all of their amateur career working to this point, it's a pretty big, it's a pretty big occasion for them, and obviously their friends and family as well. So it's nice to be able to do it and actually put an event out and make it an event. So um, yeah, it's been a laugh, mate. It certainly has been something very different. And while we're kind of hovering around the subject, let's just have a quick look at around the room there's ryan elliott of course boxing social official taxi driver but <laughs> but yeah they, they have cleared out a little bit there's some of the cake um not eaten by me but yeah as you can see quite the um quite the spectacle here today let me get you back in shot there you go um yeah quite the spectacle today not really something that you're accustomed to seeing from two guys so early in their career but that makes it all the more exciting definitely i mean it, it's you know, they're, they're, they're from Kashmir originally. So Kashmir is is uh, just in between Pakistan and India and, and they, they consider themselves Pakistani. So, well, they consider themselves their own country, but they would, you know, represent Pakistan as it were. Um, huge fan base. The fact that they can also fight as well is a, is a big plus. Um, so, yeah, I'm mean, really excited. It's, it's, a, it's a different journey. It's something new, but... I like it. I'm not. I don't. I'm not, I don't want to get stuck in my ways. I want. I want to. I want to try and make it an event of things like this. And, it, and it's, it's. It's something different. And it's good laugh. Now you mentioned them both being able to fight. Now I was privileged enough to come down to the gym and watch Adam uh, sparring with Luke Campbell ahead of the Ryan Garcia fight back end of last year when he came down. Just talk to us a little bit about those sparring sessions and what caught your eye from Adam Azim. Well, he um, he was 18 and just turned 18 or whatever it was. I think it was like, yeah, his uh, birthday was on Wednesday, so he's a July baby, but uh, we were preparing for the for the original, I think it was like December the 5th, wasn't it? And then it got pushed push back for because of COVID. But yeah, he, he was literally rocking out of the car, hardly doing a warm up, and then doing six rounds straight. I was like, that's a fluke. Next time, we'll, we'll get him, next time. Not that he, not, it was a competitive spa, it's just, Luke normally figures guys out real quick and then starts beating them up and it becomes quite a pointless exercise. And Luke's like, I'll get him, ne get him next week or whatever. And then it just became like, it was a really skillful, high class quality spa. And I thought, this kid is great. And also he's getting better week in, week out. Um, and you know, obviously, um, you know, obviously I saw Hassan spar as well. And the, you know, the, the, dad's, a, the dad's a nice, really nice guy Azim's a real nice guy he's uh, he um, you know he's he's caring he looks after the boys this, this process is like it's a it's a harsh business boxing and you need you need to have a good family around you and you know chatting to Az as well it's uh, you know it, it feels like he's you know he's on the, he's on the same page so it's it's going to be it's going to be an exciting journey Adam Sparred, I think it was about eight spars or something, maybe ten spars with uh, with Luke, and every spar was super, super competitive. So I knew if he was 18 years of age and he was doing that, imagine what he's going to be like when he's 21, 22. So that's yeah, that's what sort of really drew my attention. And Hassan has got he's got a bit more power, um, but and he's got good feet. He just needs to learn how to fight on the inside. But he's just yeah, I think he's a Youth Olympic bronze medalist and European silver medalist and stuff. They've, they've won loads of national titles as youths and juniors and stuff. Sorry, I've just eaten about eight course meals, so I'm pretty full. Um, and that, that, that's, that sometimes doesn't transcend to the pros, but I, you know, when you see them inspiring with pros, you'll understand. 
Now, when I came down to the gym the other day, I spoke to both Adam and Hassan individually, and both of them highlighted the fact that they're coming into a gym with a world champion in Lawrence Acoli, Anthony Fowler, ex-Olympian, Commonwealth, potentially soon to be British and European com uh, cruiserweight champion, Chris Billum smith How beneficial is it for guys at that, Daniel Dubois, Luke Campbell, you know, as we've already mentioned, um, how important is it at that stage of their career for those guys to have people around the gym, albeit there is no hierarchy, but to be able to learn from those guys day in, day out? It's, it's really important in my opinion. I mean, a lot of people just see the finished products, you know what I mean? They just see like, oh look, there's Josh Taylor, he's a, he's a world champion and he's unified world champion. Or oh, look, there's Lawrence Coley. It's like, well, Lawrence Coley's been in the gym a long time now. He's been in the gym since February, February I think, 2019 or whatever. So, uh, about two and a half years, I think it is. So, um, it's... You know that's a long process, and when you like, when Lawrence came in, he wasn't a world champion. He was training around world champions. He had George Groves was just coming to the end of his career, and 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 Taylor was just about to become a world champion. So you're seeing the way guys run their camps. You're seeing how many rounds are they sparring. Okay, he, you know, certain fighters spar a bit more. You know, certain fight we do certain things with other people, but no matter what, everyone's fighting for titles, and everyone's. In, like pushing themselves on and uh, and quality fighters I don't mean to be arrogant but the gym's full of quality fighters so um, seeing that from a young age you're only going to see great great talent you're only going to see top quality boxing you're not going to be in a gym full, filled with guys like you might get one or two talents then filled with guys that aren't so talented and picking up bad habits it's like you're going to see quality Taylor came on I had him from the debut and and same thing, he was he was in and around George, Hay, Frampton, people like that. And he just quietly went about his work, but then whenever he was about to fight for a world title, he knew, oh, do you know what, I didn't spar great today. Do you know what, it doesn't matter, because when I watched Thingy spar, but, but two weeks out from his world title fight, he sparred terribly, but he still fucking performed amazing. So it's like, because you can doubt yourself. You can go, shit, I haven't, have I done enough running? Have I dieted enough? Am I on the right weight I should be? Should I be a little bit heavier? Should I be a little bit, little bit lighter? You know, should I have done this set training? Or should I, do, you know, I mean, it's like, just relax. You're doing the right thing and you're in, a, you're in an environment that a coach knows what he's doing. And you're only gonna, that's only gonna build inner confidence within them. So, you know, I remember George before the good neck fight, uh, not the good neck fight, before the uh, Chudnov fight. He says to me, all right, next one's the world title. What are we going to do different? So well, why would we do anything different? I've been preparing, like we've been preparing, like we're going to fight for a world title every single time. And he went, oh yeah. I was thinking about a versatile climb. I said, I said no, in fairness, I'm going to take you run on a Saturday out because you've had four fights in a short space of time. We're going to have a little bit of an easy camp. Like that's, that's the thing. Like it's not just, it's just because I, I, I know the process. I've been in, in and around world title fights quite a long time. So. Um, and even someone as seasoned as George, he wanted to think, what should I do different? And it's like, trust the process, be in the right environment, watch top quality boxing, and you will succeed. You mentioned kind of <clears throat> Josh Taylor, obviously Carl Frampton, your dad, Barry, managed him from, from when he turned over. You had him very early in his pro career. This is now an opportunity for you. You've had in the last few years, you've had Anthony Fowler, Lawrence Acoli, different stages of their career to the guys today. Luke Campbell, different stage of his career to the guys today. But as a coach, I'm sure it gets your juices going, being able to kind of work with guys. I mean, Adam's had a couple of fights. Hassan's yet to turn over yet as a pro. It must really get your juices going, knowing you've got that long-term project to work with. Yeah, I mean, look, I took someone like Lee McGregor on from when he was a, a, an amateur. After five fights, he was a Commonwealth champion. And then he obviously went off to MTK, and now he's training with Ben Davis and stuff. But I like the fact that we are taking kids on from scratch because it's nice. It means that you can teach them all aspects. When I had Luke, it was, I think about 30 or 30, I think it's like 30, 31. And I was like, all right, well, I can't teach him to fight on the inside because he's already so far on. He can fight there, but it's, we're just, let's teach him how to shut guys down on the inside because I don't want him to have a sh one or two shit performances trying to fight guys and trying to work on things. It's like, no, every fight from now on has to be a showcase of who you are. So you need to, we need to make sure you're doing what you're best at. Whereas at the early stage, you can say, all right, let's 
let's work on this one for this fight. You know what I mean? This opponent's, let's get him a guy that's just going to walk him down for non-stop for six rounds. Work on your boxing. Let's work on a guy that's going to be a mover or a southpaw. Let's work on an attacking and stuff. So then whenever you get up to the top level, you've covered all bases. Whereas I don't, want, I don't just want to be a fixer. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want someone to have a loss and come to me. Because I'm doing that all the time. Dan's had a loss, he's come to me. Fowler's had a loss, he's come to me. It's like, and I like working with that. I like rebuilding. But at the same time, it's like, I want to be able to still take guys on from the start to say like, don't train like that, do this. These are your attributes. You know what I mean? Because look at like CBS, for instance. Like CBS was an out and out boxer. And then I actually put him in sparring with pros and I said like, all right, well, you're doing six. You can't just do four and get out and do another two. Like you gotta do six straight through. And he was like, oh, fuck, how am I gonna pace myself? Should I try and kill the clock? Should I go and work in close? He started working in close, he realized he was comfortable in there. And now he's predominantly an in close, a short to mid-range fighter, whereas before he was an out and out boxer. It's like, you know, you, you, you just, it's gotta be able to cover all bases. But the fact that Chris was able to do that, he came on straight from the amateurs. We had time to blend that style. One of the things that I wanted to speak to you about as well was something else that was discussed today. The uh, association or the, I don't know what you call it, the partnership between yourself and First Access Sports. Um, they received rave reviews from Hassan and Adam here. Just tell us a little bit about the, the new union between McGuigan's Gym and First Access Sports. Yeah, well, there's Ollie Ward, who's at First Access Sport. He, um, we'd spoke quite a lot of times over, over the years and we'd nothing had really been sort of, we'd never really taking the conversations further. We said, oh, what about if we linked up? And what about if we did this and that? And it was always just, maybe, maybe. And then he brought Daniel along um, to me. And then that was in January at the start of the year. And then it fizzled out because he went with the Tibbs, but then he came back. Uh, and he said like, look, you know, we, we're interested in linking up with somebody. And at the time I, I'm, link, I, I'm interested in linking up with someone from an outside, from a PR perspective, because I can manage these kids' career in training. I can I can manage them in matchmaking. Like we've matched fighters over the years perfectly. We've brought them up on at the right speeds. We know our fighters down to a T. It's not, it's, what's always been lacking, it's like, okay, well, we've been lacking a little bit of like getting them endorsement deals, stuff like that. And, and also having the structure behind a company that says like, okay, this is what, this is what uh, we can offer you guys. And also, this is the security that we can offer both sides of the parties. And, and I thought, do you know what, that, that's a, it's a really interesting aspect. And we, we're sort of, yeah, we're sort of trialing it with Adam and Hassan. And I think, you know, it's, it's gonna be, I, th I think it's gonna be something that's gonna be a really, like, really promising relationship moving forward because it allows fighters that I sign to say like, do you know what, these, these guys, like Ollie and First Access, they've done a lot of deals for loads of other companies within boxing, but they've always just done the commercials. And it's like, and I understand there's, there's not as much money in the commercials. So it's like, okay, well, what, what, what can, there's a little bit of give and take there. Okay, let, let, let's see what we can do to help each other out. And I think it's gonna be, a, I think it's gonna be an interesting partnership. And also I didn't, I don't want to, I didn't, never wanted to link up with someone that wanted to tell me how to do my job, right? Like if you link up with these, a lot of these sports agencies things, oh, we'll just cover the negotiations. It's like, no, because you don't know boxing. We've got the relationships, we know boxing. And actually, um, Ollie's like, you know, guys, we're, we don't know the ins and outs of boxing. We, you know, we want you guys to take the reins on that. And that's sort of, um, and that's perfect because what we've done to now in terms of development and training fighters has just been impeccable. We've just lost, we've just lost our way a little bit trying to do too many other things on the outside. And it's just like, let's just, let's just link up with people that have that infrastructure. Final thing on all things today. I think he's still over there taking photos. Just want to talk about your dad, who's uh, obviously in attendance today. Uh, again, Adam and Hassan both mentioned him in their speeches, which will be available on Boxing Social. Um, well, first of all, he's not stopped taking photos the whole time he's been here. There's uh, been a queue 
the other side of the room pretty much for the whole night. But one of the things that Adam in particular mentioned was, you know, having him around the gym, having him there for those bars, being able to, to, to really tap into the vast knowledge and experience that he has. I know you've mentioned it before, but I'm going to ask you again, how important is it for you to have that and for fighters coming into the sport for the first time to have that in their career? I never won a world title. I'm not a Hall of Famer. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can train, but I haven't done the ring walk in front of 30,000 people and fought in front of 21 million people on, on BBC. Do you know what I mean? So I sometimes, I mean, I can talk boxing to the cows come home. Do you know what I mean? I can dissect it. But sometimes to have another string to the bow to say, how did you feel, Dad, when that happened, when you were sparring shit? eight weeks into a camp and you had a world title fight in 10 days. Like how, how, did your mental, how, how did you mentally feel? Oh, I felt like this. Do you know what I thought? I felt like this, but I always knew he was going through the same, and like my opponent was going through the same things and more. So then it's like, well, because you know, I boxed for seven, seven and a half, eight years as an amateur, but like, it's, it's a different sport. It's just like, I had decent fights in the amateurs and, and won some national titles, like but it's not the same as going out you know, for 36 minutes. And, you know, you can fiddle your way through nine minutes, but you can't fiddle your way through 36 minutes. So it's like to have someone that's been there, done it, got the T-shirt, Hall of Famer, recognized worldwide for his actual boxing, that's a massive attribute to have within the gym in terms of advice. Even people like Lawrence, he'll pick his brains. Fowler picks his brains, CBS. CBS picks his brains probably too much, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, but do you know what I mean? It's it's nice. It's a nice thing to have, and and you know, he's been there for me the, the whole way through the start. And Ryan Burnett and Tommy McCarthy wanted to sign with Dad, but they didn't want to train with me, right? The the roles have changed, right? I've got loads of fighters that want me to train them, but they don't want him involved. And it's like he's now not so much involved. He doesn't he doesn't do a lot, but he's still in the gym, and that's. You know, that's me sort of saying to him, like, I still really appreciate you because I wouldn't be here doing this shit if it wasn't for his his eight years training me to allow me to understand boxing through and through. And then for the next four years, pushing fighters to say, trust me, he's the best coach around. And then after that, it's like, now they're all coming. But it's like, well, whoa, hang on a, hang on a minute. Like, I didn't just get here by chance. I got here because he helped me massively. So he's always going to be a part of my stable and he's always going to be a, a, an invaluable aspect and part of my stable. So, um, yeah, it's nice to have him there. Okay, well, before I let you go, of course, last night on BT Sport, you saw, well, not your old adversary, but Daniel Dubois' old adversary, Joe Joyce, return to the ring. Six-round stoppage win over Carlos Takam. What did you make of the fight? I thought Joe... Uh, Probably had his worst looking performance, but if you look it on paper, he stopped Carlos Takam, which is a pretty, you know, it's a pretty remarkable thing. I think Povetkin stopped him in the 11th, was it? 10 for 11th, and I think uh, AJ's controversial stoppage, and then obviously it was a life and death with Derek Chisora, and Chisora knocked him out. Is that the same Carlos Takam that boxed Povetkin? Probably not. Actually, I know it's not, but it's still a, it's still a very credible opponent. Uh, but he got hit far too much, Joe. But he's got hit far too much in every single fight. And he's always got the results, so you can't take too much away from him. I just know when people punch in combination at the top level, they're going to beat him. And, you know, I'd love to get that fight again for Daniel because I know that he was, you know, scraping the surface of what he's capable of. And Joe actually boxed a lot better against Dan. And that's maybe to say, like, wait, when he's really under the pressure, the best Joe Joyce is going to come out because he just knew he could walk through Carlos Sackham. You know, he, took, he tasted his power early on and just thought, I'll just keep, just keep walking forward with this guy. So it wasn't the, wasn't the most clinical, clean performance, but um, it was a great, great win on paper. When can we realistic? Obviously, Frank Warren has spoken about a potential rematch between Daniel Dubois and Joe Joyce. When is that realistic? When could that potentially happen? Um, well, we wanted to fight Trevor Bryant for the w, uh, for the WBA regular title, and then we wanted to box uh, Joe Joyce after it. 
because they know that the WBO route is going to be it's, it's traffic do you know what I mean it's jammed up so um, that was the plan but you know I, I, Don King's got Tre uh, Trevor Bryant that's that's a nightmare in itself the fact that he's 90 years of age and he's still wanting to promote his show in bloody um, he's still wanting to do the Rumble and Jungle, Jungle 2 do you know what I mean so it's like um you know, it's, 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 it's tough to, to, to get that fight made. And hopefully, you know, we were looking at that fight. Hopefully I can speak to Mark Bowers as the manager and Frank Warren as well. And we can sit down and say, all right, what's the route? What are we doing? But I think we'll have news soon on, on when Dan's out again. And look, if that fight for, for Dan came up again, that would be great. But it, it would be a lot better if it was for a world title. Um, so I think at some stage he wants to avenge that loss for sure. Okay, well, Shane McGregor, always a pleasure catching up. Thanks very much for speaking to Boxing Social today and having us down to this lovely event here in the beautiful town of Slough. Uh, thanks very much for speaking to Boxing Social. I will see you this week for Fight Camp. Thank you very much, Rob. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you down and also uh, a spectacle to see you go through that buffet. Cheers, mate, and I'll see you. When are you coming into Fight Camp? The bubble or? Yeah, I'll be there Thursday. Well, we're in Wednesday. Oh, sorry, we're in Tuesday, Wednesday. So that'll be good, mate. Look forward to it. Have some uh, fight week bents. Something like that, yes. And by, uh, for the record, didn't go through the buffet. They brought the food over to me. I had one plate. I was only winding you up. I was just trying to shame you, which is a real bad trait. You should never try and shame somebody. So I'm sorry about that. But, you know, you know it's only tongue in cheek. I shame myself. It's fine. <laughs> Thanks very much. I eat because I'm unhappy. I'm unhappy because I eat. <laughs> 